I'd like to encourage you to ask questions to the speakers in the app. So just write the questions to the speakers in the app and you will have fantastic answers. So Owen Gaffney, co-founder of Exponential Roadmap Initiative, you have the floor for a keynote. Thank you, thank you. Thanks everybody and thanks for the invitation to come here on Earth Day and it's a really special Earth Day uh, this, this year um, and this decade is absolutely critical for our planet. And um, you know, we're here to talk about nature, so it's climate and nature. And you know, nature has been our best friend. It provides us with our life support system, and it also absorbs all the shocks we've been giving it. And it's been doing this decade after decade after decade after decade. But how long can we rely on that resilience, the resilience of that system to absorb those shocks? And we can see that we're now pushing against the limits. And it's been mentioned here already today, you know, the planetary boundaries framework, uh, which came from the Stockholm Resilience Center, identifying the nine boundaries that keep our planet in a stable state and have kept that planet in a stable state for 10,000 years since the dawn of civilization. But we can also say with scientific certainty that we've crossed five of those boundaries. And the obvious one is climate change, and we can see the impacts all around us. But we've also crossed boundaries related to biodiversity, related to our use of fertilizers, biogeochemical cycles, re re related to chemical pollution and our use of plastics, and, uh, and related to deforestation and land use. And all these boundaries are connected, which is why uh, you know, it, we need to uh, address all of them together, uh, which is why we need to be nature positive by 2030. We need to reverse, a halt and reverse the loss of nature uh, by 2030, um, as well as dealing with climate. So really, to get to this, um, to, to get to the 1.5 degree goal, if uh, uh, in, in the Paris Agreement, um, we need to, we need a mission for 2030, and that's really about halving emissions of greenhouse gases, um, uh, halving them, you know, cutting them 50% uh, by this decade. Um, but also, it's more than that. We also have to halt the loss of nature, and we have to turn agriculture from a source of emissions, um, you know, currently around quarter of emissions, to a sink, to a store of emissions. So those three things um, in order to meet the, the Paris Agreement. And why is that so? So we have here, um, a graph of global emissions, um, you know, over the last um, um, hundred or so years, and we can see obviously the exponential rise in emissions at the top from fossil fuel use and from land use. Um, but down at the bottom, then we can see where these emissions went, and in blue we can see that um, around half of the emissions um, stayed in the atmosphere, um, but around half, this green, the dark green, and the light green, um, were absorbed by the by the ocean um, and by, um, by by land. Um, so we have about 20% um, stored by the ocean and about 30% by land. So they really are our best friend um, and we need to protect them. And as I say, they, they're growing less stable. They're becoming less efficient at carbon storage. And the biggest example of this really, um, we can see in the Amazon, uh, and this has been a shock for the research community over the last few years, um, where we can measure um, the carbon being stored in the soil and in the forests there. And in an ideal situation, we have more and more carbon stored in the Amazon. But in the last decade, um, the carbon in the Amazon has actually been, uh, it's, it's turned into a, a source of carbon. It's been, um, it's been emitting more carbon for the last 10 years than it has been storing. And this is a big, big shock. Um, so all the ecosystems on Earth, um, we need to put every effort into, um, into stabilizing these and, and turning them back into um, to sinks as fast as possible. Um, so this is a critical message for, for humanity. And in fact, the latest Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report um, has said we need to conserve about 30 to 50 percent of Earth's land, fresh water, and ocean. Um, so we're already using 50 percent of uh, the land surface. We're using about an area the size of South America to grow crops, and we're using an area around the size of Africa for our livestock. Um, so we're already taking up that 50 percent, and we can go no further. We have to start conserving the rest as a matter of urgency. So. 
The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change concludes that when it comes to land use, what is the potential there for storing carbon and for, for protecting these, these resources? Um, and, you know, land use can provide large-scale emissions reductions. Um, we can get about um, 10 billion uh, um, tonnes of um, uh, carbon um, stored in, in land, uh, carbon dioxide stored in, in land. Um, and we can also use land to remove and store um, CO2 at scale. Yeah, you know, another 10 billion um, or so tons of CO2. Um, so around, you know, 25, 30% of um, current emissions of uh, greenhouse gases um, could potentially be stored in um, in land if ev if everything, um, if all other action is um, is, is pushed forward. Um, so what does that mean? It means protecting uh, and restoring natural ecosystems to remove the carbon. Um, this, as we've heard earlier, it means um, reforestation. It means afforestation, but it also means protecting peatlands and coastal wetlands. It means protecting savannas and grasslands too. Um, but we must be very, very careful about competing demands. You know, if we're storing all this carbon, uh, we also need to supply food for a growing population, currently at 8 billion, growing to 9 billion, potentially 10 billion people. Um, so uh, this is a huge competition for land that we also need to manage. There's also... Um, so, so we... And finally, we cannot compensate um, for delayed emissions. Uh, we cannot say, oh, okay, well, you know, if I'm a company, I can put all my emissions um, into, I can, I, I can offset my emissions with, uh, with planting trees. That's not going to work. Uh, we have to get those emissions down half, half, half every decade. And we need to build these carbon sinks at the same time, at scale. So finally, you know, emissions, our mission for 2030 is to cut emissions by 50% uh, of greenhouse gas emissions, we need to halt the loss of nature and we need to turn our agriculture from a source of carbon into a huge sink of carbon. And we'll be publishing the first exponential roadmap on land use in May this year at the, the World Economic Forum. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Owen Gaffney, and we're looking forward to reading your report in May. Thank you.